and his multiple talents have helped him create the largest skydiving training center for civilians in the United States. It's amazing that it's right here in Ottawa, but there's also a lot more going on out there. If you haven't been out there, there is a lot to see. Two different restaurants, you watch the skydivers, there's a little tiki bar, there's camping out there, and there are events that draw 5,000 people in a weekend. But tonight, I'm very excited to present our speaker who has more than 26,000 skydiving jumps, a 13-time world champion, and is it now 16 or maybe 17-time world record holder, because they just set one last weekend, but the Skydive Chicago director, and, as he points out, a product of public education. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. That was half my speech you just gave. <laughs> as I get older, I realize that um, you can't do certain things like see very well. So I can't see my speech, so I brought my laptop up here to help me out with it. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to thank uh, the Chamber and Jeff for inviting me to come out here and share a little bit about what we do uh, at the airport on the north side of Ottawa. And uh, when Jeff originally asked me to speak, it was some time ago, and I was ultra excited. Uh, I don't know a lot of you in this room, so it was uh, a great opportunity for me to, to quickly draft a speech that I didn't use for a year and a half. <laughs> and so when he gave me the green light, uh, that we're going to do the speech again, I thought, well, this will be a piece of cake. I get to finally dust off that speech, uh, and, and this will be easy. And as I opened up the speech, I was reading through it, and I realized that it was only proper to start over, as so many of us have had to do uh, in the course of this pandemic. So I am embarrassed that I don't know more of you in this room. Uh, to be truthful, when you walk up to somebody and tell them they can jump out of airplanes for a living, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, my name is Ruth Nelson. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, I have 26,000 jumps. Uh, 26,000. Wow. And uh, in 1984, I did my very first got a, I'm that young. <laughs> I was four years old. My mother told me I forgot to take the trash out. And so they punished me by tossing me out of the airplane. Perhaps it was a sneak peek of what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. So if you total all of the free fall time that I have, it comes out to two consecutive weeks falling to earth. Crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in all that free fall time, as Jeff was mentioning, he did steal half my speech. Uh, I've accumulated over 13 world titles, uh, over 36 national titles, and again, we just acquired our 17th world record this past weekend. And, uh, yeah. My family has a long history of skydiving. I'm what you call a third generation skydiver. My grandfather was in the 82nd Airborne and he never pursued a sport career, uh, but his stories influenced my father to at the age of 16, forge his waiver and make his first jump in Hinkley, Illinois. I'm blaming him for all of the times I've been trouble. <laughs> they say find the passion, find something you're passionate about and you'll never work a day in your life. My father was very passionate about skydiving. When he started, it was military surplus gear, ragged out airplanes that didn't look like they should fly, and the, the stereotype of skydivers kind of didn't get a good name. And my father was very influential in changing that. So influential that the Hall of Fame is going to be inducting him uh, into the Hall of Fame this October, next month, we get to go in a few weeks. So that's super awesome. In 1982, my father opened his first skydiving business in Sandwich, Illinois. He stayed there until 1988, when he took a short break to go work for the government. My father retired from government work in 1993, and the quest to find a place to open a skydiving center was on. He was having mixed luck traveling around, but knowing he wanted to stay around the Chicago area, he was visiting all of the airports around the area. He met Julio Corsini and Julio was the original owner of the Ottawa Airport on the north side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Julio and my father hit, up, hit it off and thus started Skydive Chicago. 
We eventually bought the airport from Julio, but as our business grew, we quickly realized that we needed more space and the search for a new location was on. <clears throat> In 1996, my father met Bob and Esther Funk. My father explained to Bob that he wanted to open up a skydiving resort. Bob took him to some property that he owns. Let me pause for a second. Uh, there's a QR code on your table. If you take your phone and you scan it with your camera, uh, a picture, pictorial will pop up. And if you want to follow along, there's some pictures. <clears throat> It'll also give you an excuse to be on your phone. <laughs> Uh, as I was mentioning, my father was explaining to Bob that he wanted to build a skydiving resort. And so my father, Bob took my father to some of the property that he owned and explained to my father that he wanted to build a campground on this property so that all of the Funk's family could come and stay uh, whenever they wanted. My father agreed to build a campground adjacent to the airport and would welcome any of the Funk family to come and stay. And that offer still stands today. They shook hands. If now the task of finding a bank that'll give a man a very colorful pass, money for an airport, for skydiving, was on. My father visited several banks with mixed luck. It wasn't until he met Ben Wigman of Old Second that things started to look promising. Ben believed in the project and helped put together financing to help see it to fruition. Bob and Esther, wanting to see the project happen, were willing to do owner financing for the property. Without Ben, Bob, and Esther, there would be no current Skydive of Chicago. In 1996, as construction began, I was 16 years old, young, full of energy, excited. But I recall very vividly a day that for nine hours, we unloaded drywall. And I was thinking to myself, it might have been easier to climb Everest. But nevertheless, in 1998, after two years of construction, we opened the doors. The doors may have been open, but we were far from ready to really be open. There was no paint on the walls. There was no grass in the landing area, but we charged forward and did our very first event, a 246 wave formation the, the, that still stands as the largest formation ever built in Illinois. When you hear Ottawa, Illinois, what do you think? <laughs> Heritage Harbor, <laughs> uh, the town of Two Rivers, the Lincoln Douglas debate, the Reddick Mansion. Skydiving for most of you probably isn't at the top of that list, but you guys really have no idea how much Ottawa, Illinois is a mecca for skydiving. For the past nine years, we have yet to lose, for the past nine years, we have not lost drop some of the year. In fact, since the very beginning of that award, we have won it every single year. Since our humble beginning in 1993, over 168,000 people have made their first jump over Ottawa, Illinois. Now, if that's not impressive, 2,104,000 people have made a parachute jump over Ottawa, Illinois. Skydive Chicago is known in the industry for hosting some of the largest events in skydiving. Our annual Summerfest event just celebrated its 20th anniversary. The 10-day event attracts over 700 jumpers from around the globe. Every year, we have a large Canadian group that joins us for our Summerfest. One of the most popular things they do is they put together a Facebook group called Canadians Love Summerfest. And this page, like most pages on Summerfest, are to coordinate rides, coordinate air, uh, who's, you know, who's camping with who, but one of the underlining uh, purposes of this group is to pick what night they go to bash. <laughs> In 2016, we had the pleasure and the honor of hosting the FAI World Championships. Some of you may remember the opening ceremonies that we did at the high school. That event had 1,200 competitors from all over the globe come and call Ottawa, Illinois home for 14 days. Wow. Skydive Chicago has hosted five U.S. national championships, and we're proud to say that we're going to host the 2022 championships next September. To host the nationals, we have to bid against other skydiving centers around the U.S. One major advantage that we have to winning is the great town of Ottawa, Illinois. 
I am confident that for not for all the great restaurants, hotels, and stores, we would not be as successful in winning these bids. I am so thankful, as I'm sure many of you in this room are, that we didn't lose uh, all but one business due to COVID. Skydive Chicago is home to more than 40 world and state records. In fact, just this past weekend, as Jeff mentioned, we set a 77-person wave FAI world record. And boy, was it good to do that again. <laughs> Until in 2022, next year in August, we will attempt to break the current record by linking up 200 skydivers in the air. We're gonna use nine aircraft. We're gonna to fly to a height of 20,000 feet where we get 47 seconds to jump out, link up, separate, and open our parachutes. 47 seconds. You can't even cook minute rice. <laughs> Skydive Chicago is home to two U.S. skydiving teams. The teams called SDC Rhythm and SDC Core represent the U.S. at world level competitions. They just came back from Russia uh, where they placed first and second respectively. The team members are full-time skydivers brought into Ottawa, Illinois. They're great ambassadors to the sport and they love to call Ottawa, Illinois home. An exciting division of Skydive Chicago is our Department of Defense certification. <laughs> While you are snuggled in your bed, playing with your kids, high above the skies of Ottawa, Illinois, our service men and women are training to keep our country safe. Our client list includes the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force. We provide training, aircraft facilities to keep our service men and women, men and women deployment ready. We have expanded to acquire Canadian National Defense Certification and branched out to serving the Canadian military in the same capacity. Skydive Chicago is committed to serve the community as a public space. First and foremost, serving as an airport that services the city, but also as a venue for car shows, fundraisers, and field trips. The funny thing about our field trips is that there are always three times as many adults <laughs> as kids. So I question whether the field trip is for the adults or for the kids. This past August, the LaSalle County Streetcars uh, team partnered with us to bring their annual car show that saw over 2,000 people in attendance. The YMCA brought, their, brought over 100 kids out to learn about skydiving, crawl around the airplanes, touch the parachutes. Our annual 4th of July fireworks and UFO trip, UFO jump is very popular. Nowadays, to get people off the phone, I literally have to light myself on fire and jump out of an airplane. You'll see that in one of the pictures. So how safe is skydiving? This is a common question, and I thought it would be good to bring some real data from the United States Parachute Association. Skydiving is a popular sport, and in 2020, participants made 2.8 million jumps at over 200 USPA-affiliated skydiving centers across the country. In 2020, USPA reported 11 fatal accidents. That's a rate of 0.39 per 100,000 jumps made. In 2019, pre-COVID, uh, we made more than 3.3 million jumps. The fatality was recorded was for 15 at a rate of 0.45 per 1,000 jumps. That's great, but how does that compare to other activities? According to the In Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, in 2019, 843 people were killed while driving a, mo a bicycle. 36,000 people were killed in a motor vehicle. 4,700 people were killed on a motorcycle. I believe skydiving is like crossing the street. If you run across the street and don't look left and don't look right, and don't look for traffic, the chances of getting hurt are very high. If you walk up to the edge of the street, you look left and you look right and you wait for there's no traffic to be there and you cross, the chances of getting hurt are very little. Technology is starting to make its way into skydiving in a way to make it safer. There's devices that will alert us at certain altitudes, knowing that we should open our parachutes. There's tracking software that we use as a training aid, teaching people how to fly their parachutes. There's also little computers that we jump with in case we're having too much fun and taking too many Instagram photos. 
it'll open our parachute for us. Now, I'm not going to stand in front of you and say, Scott, I'm in the safe. My attorney wife won't let me. <laughs> there are certain risks associated with that. But what I will tell you is that it is one of the most amazing things you can do in your life. Imagine for a minute, maybe close your eyes and just hear me speak for a moment. You're two miles above the ground. Below looks like a mosaic of farm fields and towns. You realize for the first time in your life, you are looking down at clouds. The door slides open, the cool air rushes past your face, and the energy inside the airplane, the excitement on people's faces is overwhelming. It takes a hold of you. You work your way to the edge of the door. The view looks like something that should be on a postcard. Your heart is beating like the first time you met your in-laws. <laughs> you take a deep breath and you hear the words, ready, set, go. The wind starts rushing past your body. You feel weightless. You don't feel a sense of falling, more a sense of flying. Your fear turns to excitement. Your smile grows bigger and bigger. At the right altitude, you pull your parachute to open a rainbow pattern of savior above your head, and the loud noise turns silent. You peacefully steer your parachute back to the landing area. Your feet touch down on the ground, and you cannot stop smiling. You're at a loss for words. For the first time in your life, all of your worries have disappeared. You were present, living in the moment, living your life to the fullest. I'm betting you're sitting in your chair right now saying, there is no way I'm going to the I don't care what group has for stories or numbers or anything. That's perfectly normal. But to grow, you must step out of your comfort zone. Now that doesn't always mean jumping out of airplanes. Did you have to step out of your comfort zone during COVID? How much of your life changed? Are you fully recovered? When you asked your boss for a raise or when you put the down payment down on a new building for your business, how far out of your comfort zone were you? I see people out of their comfort zone every day. There is nothing comfortable about looking out of the door of an airplane two miles above the ground for the first time. While there are no two experiences alike, there's one common outcome. They all come out on the other side, a more empowered person. They have confidence that they didn't know they had. They were able to get past a traumatic moment. We've even had people overcome PTSD. A great example of somebody stepping out of their comfort zone is a woman named Casey McGrath. Some of you may know Casey. She is the star of Fiddle Rock. <laughs> Casey has mastered the craft of taking pop songs and adding violin to them. She's played at most of the bars and venues in the local area. But what you may not know is Casey used to have stage fright. Casey came to Skydive Chicago wanting to skydive. What we did not know is more than wanting to jump, she wanted to be, she wanted to be able to be, she wanted to get over being afraid. She knew that if she could control, if she knew that if she jumped out of an airplane, she could control how she acted on stage. Casey not only became a, did her first show, but she became a licensed skydiver. She stepped out of her comfort zone. She emerged a more confident, powerful person and can now stand on stage and perform at the highest level. Believe it or not, even I step out of my comfort zone. In 2003, my father was involved in a skydiving accident. He, along with another jumper, were on final approach and in a perfect, scenario, perfect storm scenario, they didn't see each other. They collided about 300 feet above the ground. His parachute collapsed and did not reinflate until he struck the ground. He was rushed to the Ottawa hospital where they stabilized him and then quickly realized that they needed to get him to a trauma zone, trauma center. They put him in the helicopter. They flew him to Peoria. When we arrived, we got into the waiting room. And anybody who has gone through a moment like this knows that when the doctor comes out, there's just that look on his face. And you know that it's not good. My father passed away, and it was one of the hardest things I've had to deal with. 
At the time, I was 23 years old. I actually had blue hair. <laughs> and I instantly got promoted to running a multi-million dollar business. I'm proud to say that since taking the helm, I've tripled the business. I have grown the fleet of airplanes from two to nine. And if it, was, it wasn't by choice to step out of my comfort zone, but you know what, I made the best of it. I know there's more people in this room thinking, why on earth is he Scott? I mean, after having lose, lost his father to it. And that's a great question. It's a really good question. Believe me, I considered quitting. But as the days and the weeks went by, I found comfort. I found comfort in the fact that my father died doing the one thing that he was most passionate about. It wasn't, he wasn't killed in a car accident. He wasn't killed plugged into a machine. And my friends, if I had a choice of the way I died, I wanted to be the one thing I was most passionate about. So why do I jump out of airplanes? Because I don't feel the sole purpose of humans is to sit at a desk. With all respect to people that sit at a desk, I do as well. I want you to think for the last minute, when was the last time you felt alive? You're probably saying, well, when I woke up this morning, I felt alive. <laughs> but I want you to think and stop for a minute and really think, when was the last time I felt on top of the world, confident, control, master of my own domain? Perhaps this was when your children were born or when they finally moved out of the house. <laughs> Maybe it was a near-death experience. And I'm not saying that you need to have a near-death experience to feel alive. But what I am telling you is that every day I'm jumping out of airplanes, I feel alive. I have the most amazing family. That includes my incredible wife, Heidi, and a three-year-old terrorist, <laughs> also known as my son, Rocket. On the weekends, most husbands get told to fix the sink, go do the honeydew list. My wife will actually tell me to go jump out of an airplane. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't like me. <laughs> and when you're married to an attorney, you quickly realize that you should do what you're told. Because all kinds of statues and rules will come out that you didn't even know existed about going to jump. <laughs> my wife knows that skydiving is a very important part of my life. And she knows that when I don't jump, I don't, I'm not the best version of myself. After a day of jumping, I feel refreshed, energized, ready to tackle life's challenges. My intention tonight wasn't coming here to convince all of you to jump out of an airplane. But if I did, we have availability this time. <laughs> I want to thank Jeff, the Chamber, and all of you guys for letting me share stories about Scott of Chicago and myself. Thank you.